Hello, this is Mr. Edmund Martelli. I would like to show you how to quickly calculate a forward and backward pass on an activity on node network diagram. So I have here a table that's filled out and I have a corresponding activity node diagram that corresponds to the project flow. You'll notice each arrowhead goes to its respective task. Each task already has its task time within this node. So you'll notice that task A and B both do not have a precedent. So once the project is initiated or started, both of those tasks can occur at once. So the first thing to do on that very first activity, and if you only have one, this still applies, change your earliest start time to just one. Now for this specific example, I have to change both of those to just one. So now I need to calculate earliest finish time. I have a formula here and it says earliest finish time equals the early start time plus duration minus one. So for activity A, my earliest finish time is going to be one plus ten, which is eleven, minus one, which is ten. So what about B? My duration is five plus my start earliest start time of one, which is six, minus one is five. Okay, let's move to task C. Its earliest start time, according to this formula, is its predecessor's earliest finish time, which was 10, plus 1. So you're going to add a timekeeping unit. So it's 10 plus 1 timekeeping unit is 11. Let's calculate earliest finish time. Earliest finish time is the earliest start time 11, plus the duration of 5, minus 1. So you're going to get 16 minus 1 is 15. Okay, let's move down to task D. Its earliest start time is its predecessor's earliest finish time plus 1 is going to be 6. So its earliest finish time is going to be 6 plus 4 minus 1, which is going to be 9. So now we've got a choice. To calculate earliest, finish, earliest start time, I'm sorry, for activity E, we have to examine the earliest finish time of both activities C and D as they are in a precedent to activity E. So what you do in this situation on a forward calculation is use the maximum of the two earliest finish times. In this case, is task C of 15. So I'm going to take 15 and add 1, which is 16. So its duration plus its earliest start time minus 1 is also going to be 16. Now, just like we started at day 1 on our, on our first activities node, we're going to use its early latest, earliest finish time as its latest finish time as well, which is 16. That will ensure that the project has no delays. Now we're going to work backward and use a different formula. So to calculate latest start time is my latest finish time minus the duration plus 1. So I've got 16 minus 1 plus 1 is 16. So now that 16 would take the earliest start time of a successor to find the latest finish time of its predecessor. So what I'm trying to solve here is for activity C. We're going to sol solve the latest finish time for activity C. I have to use its successor, which E is its successive task, and subtract 1, which is going to be 15. So to find its latest start time, I take its latest finish time, which is 15, and I <coughs> subtract the duration of 5, which is 10, and then add 1, which is going to be 11. And let's solve for D. D's latest finish time is going to be E's latest start time minus 1. So its latest finish time is going to be 15, just like activity C. So 15 minus 4 plus 1 is going to be 12. <coughs> so let's solve for activities A, latest finish time. I'm going to take 11 for latest finish time, A successor, which is activity C, and subtract 1. So this is going to be 10. Now I'm going to solve for the latest start time, which is going to be 10 minus 10, which is 0, plus 1. So my latest start time is going to be 1. Now let's solve finally for B on a backward pass. 
Its latest finish time is going to be its successor's successor's latest start time, which is activity D's latest start time of 12, minus 1, which is 11. So let's finally solve the latest start time. It's going to be 11 minus 5, which is 6, plus 1, which is 7. Now, the next thing we're going to do is determine a float. And the float is its latest start time minus the earliest start time. So for activity A, it's going to be 1 minus 1, which equals 0. Let's solve activity C. It's going to be 11 minus 11, again, which is 0. What about activity E? 16 minus 16, 0. Okay, let's drop down to activity B. 7 minus 1 is 6. What about activity D? 12 minus 6 is 6. And how to indicate your critical path is whatever activities have zero slack time also indicate critical path. So change those arrowheads to the color red. Like so. So we've identified our critical path. Thank you.